Donald Trump and his administration are notoriously not fans of facts. The, the news is fake. Wiretapping. Alternative facts. This was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period. Backtracking, deflection, and outright falsehoods have flowed from the White House with alarming regularity. The Russia investigation is bursting with examples of how the Trump administration has played fast and loose with the facts, particularly where the Trump Tower meeting is concerned. Wherever this investigation ends, it's likely to involve the strange events of this mystery meeting on June 9th, 2016. So let's take a closer look at how that's unfolded. Attendees included Donald Trump Jr., campaign manager Paul Manafort, and Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner. Then there was Natalia Veselnitskaya, a Russian lawyer with alleged ties to the Kremlin, Renat Akhmetshin, a Russian-American lobbyist, Ike Kovalodsky, a Russian businessman, and a translator for the Russians. Also at the meeting was Rob Goldstone, a publicist who'd worked with the Trump family in the past on the Miss Universe pageant. He was arranging the meeting on behalf of his client, Russian singer-songwriter Emin Agalarov. Only about a year later did details about the meeting start to trickle out. On July 8, 2017, the New York Times broke the news that President Trump's son, Donald Trump Jr., had arranged this meeting with people connected to Russia. In less than 24 hours, Trump Jr. responded with two different statements. First, the president's eldest son released a statement that was rather casual in tone, insisting they mainly discussed a program about the adoption of Russian children. He also said there was no follow-up to the meeting. Months later in December, the public learned that there were actually several follow-up emails between a Trump campaign aide and Goldstone, the publicist who arranged the meeting in the first place. And of course, the problems with that statement didn't stop there. Next, the Times added that Trump Jr. was told his contacts claimed to have dirt on Hillary Clinton. So Trump Jr. went to the paper with another, different statement. Yes, Clinton came up, but Veselnitskaya's statements were vague, ambiguous, and made no sense. Then the New York Times told Trump Jr. that it would be publishing his email thread with Goldstone about the meeting. So Trump Jr. released it himself, preemptively on Twitter along with yet another contradicting statement. Donald Trump Jr. tried to explain that he thought the info on Hillary was just political opposition research, or oppo, which is pretty much information about your opponent that may harm their campaign, and it's common during US elections. Trump Sr. later chimed in insisting that most people would have taken the meeting, but veterans of past Republican presidential campaigns interviewed by HuffPost said they wouldn't have, and more to the point, Oppo is rarely, if ever, given by foreign entities. As far as we know now, the meeting was sparked by the promise of damaging info on Clinton, and Veselnitskaya said she left with the promise that if Donald Trump was elected, his administration would review U.S. sanctions on Russia. Now it seems pretty odd that Trump Jr. changed his statement so many times and in such a short amount of time. But it was later reported that his earlier statement was actually dictated by President Trump while flying back to the U.S. from Germany. This created room for questions about the extent to which Trump was aware of or even involved in these meetings. From this initial back and forth, plenty of explanations ensued about various details springing from this meeting. Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law, who attended the Trump Tower meeting, made a statement admitting to meeting with Russians four times but he insisted that nothing unsavory was discussed. But then he said he took the meeting because the businessman had a direct relationship with Vladimir Putin. He also said he didn't know anything about emails from WikiLeaks, the organization responsible for the DNC email hack. But his brother-in-law, Trump Jr., had forwarded him and others a message from WikiLeaks. Kushner also left some crucial documents out of a package that he was supposed to hand over to the Senate Judiciary Committee. Even people at the meeting who weren't from the Trump campaign came under scrutiny. The public learned the Russian-American lobbyist and the businessman, who were both in attendance in June 2016, had a meeting in Moscow just before news of the Trump Tower meeting broke. The obvious question is, were they getting their stories straight? One of their lawyers say they were not. But the scenario raises a few eyebrows. 
As more time passed, it came out that George Papadopoulos, a foreign policy advisor on the campaign, was first to hear from the Russians about Hillary Clinton intel. And in March 2016, he made an attempt to set up a meeting between Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin. As far as we know, he failed. But when questioned by the FBI in 2017, he denied having Russian contacts. Next thing you know, he's among the first charged by Mueller for making false statements. Also charged, but for other offenses, were Paul Manafort, Trump's former campaign manager, who was also present at the Trump Tower meeting, and Rick Gates, who was one of Manafort's business associates. As a matter of fact, it's been reported that Papadopoulos is the reason Mueller's investigation started in the first place. Papadopoulos eventually pleaded guilty to making false statements. When charges were laid initially, many in Trump's camp downplayed the role Papadopoulos played in the campaign. The White House called him a low-level volunteer. Trump himself said he didn't recall meeting him. As it turns out, he was actively involved even two months before the election, when he helped arrange a meeting between Trump and the president of Egypt. Fast forward to January 2018, and Mueller's investigation revealed that Ivanka Trump was at Trump Tower at the time of the pivotal meeting as well. She didn't attend the meeting, but she met some of the attendees in the elevator and they exchanged small talk. Again, a detail that was not previously disclosed. Now, the big looming question is, how much did President Trump know about all of this? Did he know about the tower meeting? Did he know about Papadopoulos trying to arrange a meeting between him and Putin? Why did he draft his son's statements? Did he intend for them to be misleading? There have been other instances of Trump attempting to interfere with the Russia investigation. He asked for FBI Director James Comey's loyalty and then fired him. When Jeff Sessions was about to recuse himself from the Russia investigation, Trump tried to get him to stay on so Sessions could protect him. With an interview with President Trump himself reportedly next on Mueller's radar, the Trump-Russia investigation may be coming to a close, or at least the end of this chapter, one that could even lead to a criminal prosecution or even impeachment.